So there are basically two different kinds of SMR drives that are available today. There's a third that's not quite yet available. Um, but the, the two that we're going to cover today are drive managed and host managed. So drive managed does something very interesting. A drive managed SMR drive pretends. It just kind of fakes it out and says, guess what? You can use it exactly like you've always been doing. Just plug it in in replacement of a PMR drive and you're not going to even notice. Well, you might notice, but um, you, uh, your applications will still work. You don't have to do anything and, and the firmware on the hard drive itself manages any sort of translation and if you write that byte, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do all of the right things. The host managed uh, will uh, require the application or the operating system to have those smarts to know exactly how to lay down the track. We'll cover that in a little bit. But for now, we're going to cover drive managed because these are some things that you can actually buy today. To do that, they've got this thing called a media cache. So remember that a hard drive is built out of a stack of platters, the spinning media hard drives are built out of a stack of platters. And you can go from the outside edge into the inside edge and you're writing that down. Well, you can see here on this image that you've got these different bands that are the SMR bands. But on this outer diameter, which is the part that's going to spin the fastest, you've got something that is really just treated as a traditional uh, PMR area. And it is the media cache. Now this image I have pulled, and there's a link at the bottom, uh, from a, the, the Skylight paper. And there was a paper presented at the, earlier this year uh, at, at the FAST conference where they took some of these drives, literally cut a hole in it, and kind of sealed it off again, and then uh, watched what the drive heads were actually doing when they put various workloads on this. And so uh, it was a great source of reference as far as some of the actual uh, limitations of the drives and some of the constraints around it. And uh, in our own testing, we've uh, confirmed a lot of this uh, very experientially. So here's what happens on this and why this is really so important, why I wanted to spend some time on this. SMR drives have something fundamentally new that hard drives didn't used to have. They now have state. And so you've got, imagine you're writing in this drive, especially with these drive managed SMR drives. The drive is, make, is making this translation between what we used to, how we used to talk to drives to this SMR way. And what happens is that it now keeps track of what is living where on the hard drive. So you've got a, a basically a map of when I write this piece of data down, now I have to find the appropriate SMR uh, track and write it into that and remember where my uh, right pointer is on that and, uh, and stuff like that. Drives have always had some amount of cache um, some amount of RAM on the drive themselves, which they can use to uh, buffer writes and, and cache some reads and uh, kind of smooth out some of the performance. The media cache behaves very, very similarly, but it's actually persisted, it's durable, and it is written down onto the platter. And it's much, much larger than you would get in um, in a traditional, uh, like the, the RAM cache. So the RAM cache, you might be looking at, say, 128 megabytes or something like that. The media cache, uh, we have uh, tested and found that uh, the media cache will start impacting performance and kind of fill up in enough uh, sense that it uh, will start impacting things at around uh, 30 gigabytes. Ish. So you've got about 30 gigabytes on um, reserved on the overall capacity of the drive as this media cache. So what that means is the media, well, the media cache or the drive has to manage two things about the cache. One, they have to manage well, how many bytes are actually stored in this media cache. If we get too full, then we need to slow things down because the, the cache, the buffer's filling up. So we, and we need to slow client requests in because we can't offload them to the SMR zones uh, fast enough. Um, the other thing is that it has to keep track of, say, basically the number of writes. And so that is something else that can impact performance. So in this case, when you start running out of cache space, uh, you're going to have a performance hit. And the uh, performance hit starts uh, being experienced around 30 gigabytes of uh, bytes written or about 200,000 writes whichever one comes first. So if you're writing very, very large files, you're probably going to hit the, the capacity 
limit first. If you're writing very small files, you're probably going to run into the, uh, the number of operations uh, that are being managed. And this is basically this state table that the drive is managing, saying that I've accepted all of these writes, these 200,000 writes, and now I need to kind of flush them out and figure out how to reorder the writes so that they go out appropriately onto these SMR bands. So uh, that's, that's basically um, where we are as for what the drive media cache does. So that being said, how does this actually affect performance in looking at reads and writes to the, to the drive? The manufacturers will already say that SMR drives are going to be a little bit slower than traditional PMR drives. This is uh, the results of some tests that we ran at SwiftStack. And it is random writes. And basically looking at the raw device and then seeking to a random position on that raw device and writing out an object or an object, a file, a, a, a uh, chunk of bytes. So direct, uh, direct micro benchmark directly to the, to the drive itself. Nothing else, not even a file system in the way. And so we tested this at everything from 4K writes all the way up to 4 megabyte writes. And you can see that the, when, we're, um, when we're dealing with very, very small things, we can't really sustain a very large throughput because we end up running into that drive media cache like number of items, uh, and then performance goes down. Um, however, when you get to bigger objects, things like four megabytes, then you're going to be able to start writing much, uh, you have much more throughput before you get impacted by, um, by the performance of the drive. And you would think, you look at this and like, oh wow, current trends continue, well I'll just, man, let's, let's write 100 megabyte objects and we're going to get like infinite speed, right? Not quite. Um, so we suspect that generally the limits that you're going to see will be at whatever that SMR band size is. So if an SMR band size is going to be around, say, 256 megabytes or something like that, you're not going to see any performance after that. And more so, um, what I, the way I phrase this as a sustainable daily write limit is, in this example, if you have a 4 megabyte object or a 4 megabyte writes to an SMR drive, you can sustain on average throughout an entire day about 8 megabits a second of writes. That doesn't mean that you have to stay at or below 8 megabits all the time. You could spike, but within that day you need to average at 8 megabits a second. And that's actually really important because if you do spike above that, then you will start dealing with this background garbage collection defrag process that's happening to move things from the media cache into the SMR zones on the drive. And when that happens, performance tanks. I mean, like three orders of magnitude worse. You can move from writing megabytes to bytes per second. And uh, so that's why you really need to stay, stay below this. Now you look at this and we start thinking about, okay, well, what does this mean for Swift itself? So, okay, that's not too bad. You know, four megabytes, that's not very big. I've got lots of data that's a lot more than that. But if you remember back, say, six months ago in Vancouver, when we had quite a few different public uh, service providers uh, who are running OpenStack Swift share a lot more information about their numbers, the object size distribution looks more like this. And this is kind of bad. And the problem is that, um, I'll admit, I actually kind of, made up some of these numbers to just kind of show a nice big bulge in the curve because we don't have it quite at this resolution. But what we do know for a fact that at least with uh, some uh, service providers is that 91% of their objects are less than 100K. What does that mean if you say that you need to have like four megabyte or more or larger objects? At that point, you're like, wait, th these two things do not work together. So um, that's going to give you a hint on some of the uh, conclusions that we'll come to uh, in a little bit. Um, but the point is that in general Swift workloads and kind of the public cloud use case and kind of just the general purpose use case, the way a lot of people have been seeing it is that they're very heavily influenced at doing very, very small writes. And SMR drives are very, very good at, or not very good, but they are much better at doing large writes. And until these things would match up, you would say, hmm, it's going to be kind of tricky to use SMR drives inside of a general purpose Swift cluster.